What's up, everyone? Uh, we have another home gym roundtable. On this one, we have Gluck, No Fate, and then Flex marks the spot. Thanks, guys, for hopping on. Let's dive straight into the first question, which is who or what is the best product release of 2023 so far? Oh, wow. I'm going to defer to that one. You guys can take that one. I got to uh, think about that. Take it. Fine. I'll go first. Listen, it's the Athena from Rep Fitness, and here's why. It's it's very close to the Aries, but it, you can buy one side versus the other. So if someone is on a budget, they can get a lot of functionality out of just one side. It's a huge space saver, and clearly they're still developing it. They already showed a prototype for their rack mounted. So clearly the Athena is just has the most ingenuity, the most functionality, and it is very cost effective when you consider the price of a functional trainer. Well, that's gonna be tough. I'm bad with dates and calendars. I don't actually know what came out this year. <laughs> I'm trying, yeah, that's trying to look at my phone. <laughs> Think about yeah, that's it. what I'm kind of thinking through right now. Um, I think for me, the best release that, that I've purchased this year is probably the, well, I guess I didn't purchase it this year, but I received it this year after a long pre-order is the uh, the Bulletproof Isolator. That had a lot of hype going into it, and it pretty much delivered on everything that uh, Larry promised when he was when he was, you know, promoting it, you know, almost a whole year in advance. And I, I, I think that that did release this year, right? It wasn't, it wasn't like 20. Uh, yeah, I think it was this so. year. And they have okay, a lot yeah. of stuff. You've seen the three post rack and his, uh, mm -hmm. the Smith machine looks pretty cool too. Right. And I'm, I'm still waiting for the PCD. That that's the one I'm, I'm really pumped for. Hopefully yeah. That, yeah. That he's got some soon. cool ideas. Yeah. I don't know what uh, my favorite release would be. Cause like I said, I, I can't think of one. I, I mean, I can only think of what I'm currently working on reviewing. And I mean, I like the Gungnir curler. I don't know if you guys have the original or Jake, you might have it before they, fully knurled it, but I don't, I'm not going to say that's the best release. Winnie's favorite power bar right now is the hybrid sitting somewhere behind me, but those aren't exciting releases. Nothing like the isolator or something like that. Yeah. Tough to be the Athena and the isolator. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how the rest of the year plays out. Jonathan, let's go with you for a, for a quick question. So you've been at this quite a while. First of all, remind, before you get into your answer, remind people how long you've been doing this and then tell us. Five years now, but just for reference, I have over 1500 videos and and yes i probably i've seen them all i've edited them all i've shot them all and uh most of you haven't watched any of them but that's okay all right <laughs> yes well tell us about your best and your worst video so my worst video and i'm i'm still bitter to this day and i'm hoping i can pull you in and get you on my side is when i did a collaboration so for those of you one of the cool things or fun things to do is to collaborations with other youtubers and this collaboration was where I was gonna put my video on his channel, he was gonna put his video on my channel, same exact video, and it was not home gym related, it was actually the Travis Scott McDonald's Challenge. Travis Scott, a famous rapper who actually collaborated with McDonald's. So it was just a fun little like eating thing, right? Well, like all my videos, you wouldn't know it from the views, but I actually put a lot of time, I did research, put a lot of time into the video, and then I, of course I edited it on the back end. And I thought this guy was gonna do the same thing for a good product. Well, he sends me this video and I have to put it up on my channel. And he, even in the video, he says like, oh, he didn't put any effort into it. And he clearly just like, <laughs> I don't even know what he was thinking, but, but I was BS. I got no views on his video, of course. Meanwhile, my beautiful video got 3000 views on his channel. And for those who not know my channel, uh -huh. that's huge. That would be like one of my top performers for like the year. So I, I was very, very bitter. Now my favorite, my favorite video, um, at hmm. least so far, and there's been quite a number of them, was actually my collaboration with Marcus from Twisted Barbell. We did a head-to-head -head comparison of the Athena versus the lat pull down and low row from Rep Fitness. And it was really well done. He put a lot of effort in, I did, and the, 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 the mashup went really well. Oftentimes when you film outside of one another, it's kind of hard to splice it. And it actually went nice and smooth. I kept it short and tight. Unlike a lot of YouTubers who are making 15 minute videos just for the ad revenue, when the video could be five minutes, we kept it nice and quick and efficient. And that that one just, I, I can rewatch it and not get sick of it. Nice. Can I just say I'm, I'm relieved he didn't say his worst video was the collaboration with me. He hasn't released yet. <laughs> that's coming on Saturday. If you started that, I thought if that's what you were going it's, for. It's edited. I just got to come up with a, I got to come up with a great thumbnail to, to exemplify how great this video is going to be. Saturday, 930. <laughs> oh, nice. Got a date, time. Nice. Now I'm excited. Nice. All right, moving on, Mark. So what is something that you own that more people in the home gym market need to know about? about and then also what's a product that you know that maybe gets too much attention yeah so when you presented this as a question you know i was kind of trying to think through everything you know um 
and I <laughs> kind of settled on probably the least flashy piece here. So the piece that I think is really underrated and I think needs more love is just a simple plyo box. I use my plyo box literally every single time I'm 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 in in my gym. You know whether it's you know as an actual uh, uh, workout accessory or if I'm you know just kind of taking a seat on it in between sets or just you know setting items on it. It's pretty much I pretty much utilize it for for pretty for everything. And a really underrated feature that I like it for is whenever I'm doing any sort of like heavy dumbbell work, we'll, we'll set it in front of my bench. And instead of, you know, picking up the dumbbells directly from the rack and kind of walking them back to the bench a little bit or picking them up from the ground, you know, you just kind of set them, set them right on your plyo box, you know, and fall right back into them as, as you normally would. And when you're done, just set them right back on the plyo box. It's, uh, um, it, it's, it's really taken a lot of that extra, you know, unnecessary effort and, you know, the presets and post sets. So, so that's the piece that I think, you know, probably needs a little bit more love, just kind of taking it back to the basics. And for the most I guess is it like is this like overrated or um, what, what is it the uh, piece Just, of uh, equipment that gets too much love? Yeah, yeah. So I I'm gonna say the transformer bar, which I think the first time you had me on, I was kind of raving about it in you know comparison to the Mars bar. But since then, I've pretty much uh, picked up most of the major uh, safety squat bars. You know, just the basic ones. You know, picked up the uh, the prime super squat bar and the transformer bar is kind of bad in comparison to mm. every single bar. You know, it it's you know kind of that that common theme you see among those do it all you know pieces among you know whatever industry whatever product type you're looking at. You know, it does a lot of things, but it doesn't do anything particularly well. Especially you know compared to other pieces that that are specifically dedicated to you know certain squat variations, and um, I think I think I've seen you know a lot of consistent uh, transformer bar you know love you know uh, online uh, not just recently pretty much over the past few years, and I think that's kind of it's going to kind of pick right back up here again this weekend once I think um, Rogue's finally going to open up the pre sales for the. Uh, for the, the Rogue Produce version. And based on my inside sources, which is DMs with uh, Kabuki, um, apparently the specs are pretty much going to stay exactly the same. They're they're just pretty much giving it a, a cosmetic facelift. So I think um, we're going to see a, another pretty big uptick that I'm. it's going to drive me crazy, you know, seeing, gotcha. seeing yep, how, how many people sense. recommend that as the, the yeah, go-to melding, safety squat bar. Melding Kabuki and Rogue together. Those are mm-hmm. sometimes two very overhyped companies. <laughs> Not that I, you know, I don't think products, Interesting. But. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. And then you, Mr. Gluck, what has been your favorite product to review? And then how about least favorite? Favorite product to review implies I'm having fun with this. <clears throat> and this is not always fun. But I guess my favorite product to review, or at least though an item I didn't see myself enjoying as much as I do and using as much as I do, is my reverse hammer from Bells of Steel. It's not the best quality version of one of those out there, you know, the Rogue Donkey or whatever whatever their version's called. That's going to be a better quality, but for what it's done for my health, so I was having back issues. I think I talked about this in my top five pieces of non-essential equipment or something like that. But I was having back issues from squatting, probably from bad form or whatever, and just lifting hard all the time. So I'd go to get up when I was done playing with my kids. I'd be on the floor and I'd go to stand up. And I'd kind of have to slowly walk down the hall as I extended my back up. And I was it was just really uncomfortable. And so I got the bells kind of reproached me. I was like, do you want to review this? There's no reviews of it. And I wasn't honestly particularly interested in it because I don't think most gyms need a, or at least have enough space to justify a reverse hyper. And I don't think most gyms have enough space for a GHD, but it's a combo, right? So as Flex or Mark was saying, with a transformer, sometimes you try to do a lot of things, you don't do them well. So I wasn't interested, but it was a thousand dollars. They wanted to send it. So I said, sure. And I've done reverse hypers and back extensions every week since I've got that thing. And I have no back pain. Some of that's probably from fixing my form and doing other things in training. But I would not build a gym without one of these ever because of what it's done for my general health. So that's kind of my favorite piece. That's not like your classic power rack, dumbbells, barbell kind of thing. Least favorite, you can just look at some of my most popular videos where I get angry. Things like the Titan pivoting tricep bar where people still argue with me that it, 
I'm using it wrong. And I'm like, <laughs> it says tricep. I'm reading their description. I'm telling you what they, what they want you to use it for. I'm, you can find other uses, I'm sure. Or the um, Yahi Tech barbell, that thing did really well. But it's, it's actually sitting right over there. I almost bent it the other day, dropping weight on another really terrible item I reviewed is the bounce from Power Rack, that $200 Power Rack. I did recently. You can't actually lift off to bench or squat in it because they put like a cross member on the ground where your feet would be. <laughs> and it's 16 gauge steel. So we just dropped its weight capacity on it. I don't know when that video is going to come out, but it crumpled and uh, <laughs> it should make for an inner entertaining video. But stuff like that is probably some of the worst stuff I reviewed, even though the videos are a little more entertaining. Awesome. Cool. And then lastly, uh, do you guys have any thoughts on Pilar 4? who owns Garage Gym Reviews, also buying Barbend. I have a thought on how you just pronounce Pillar, but... Pillar? I don't know. Pillar? Is it not Pillar? <laughs> pillar 4? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever said it out loud. Pillar. <laughs> pillar. It's pillar. like when you go to a review something, you're like, how do I say gun uh, yeah. here? And you look at other people's reviews and like, how, yeah. how do you pronounce this word? I had some thoughts because I posted on my story, uh, Pillar 4 owns Garage Room Reviews, Sports Illustrated, Barbend, and uh, Active.com. Or I, kept, I, might, I don't want to be wrong on that like last mattress, one. Mattress website. Mattress, so they own yeah. Mattress, but they have another big fitness company they own. Well, they so, like partner with like Sports Illustrated, right? I it's don't not, know. It, yeah. says, it said in their graphic it was under their suite with uh, Garage Room Reviews and Barbend, but I didn't look really well into it. I don't know. It. So when I posted that to my story, I thought – it's like a lot of stuff. You get the illusion of choice. You know, you go to the grocery store to get cereal and how many companies actually own all those those cereal things. And sometimes I wonder, I'm not saying those companies like Barbend, I, I love what they've done and Graduate Reviews has done some great stuff over the years. But you start wondering when you have this large corporation that owns, you know, kind of like this umbrella of stuff, is it like the news where you see five things, but they're all feeding from the same source. It, they, I, I hope they still keep making great content, but it does worry me a little bit when you get a master corporation kind of with their hands in so many things, you know, you start seeing if you really pay attention, I don't want to, I'm not going to list things out or whatever, because I don't need any enemies online more than I have, but you can see there's content shifts and there's different things companies do. I still respect what those companies put out, but I do wonder if we're going to be, you know, these, these, if you think about garage room reviews, not to pick on them, but they have more reach than all of the rest of us combined. That's a massive company with the Facebook group, with their web page, with their channel has something like 400,000 subscribers, their Instagrams in the hundreds of thousands. Like they have more power than all of us combined. So it can be a little scary if somebody comes out and says, this is the best product, even if the rest of us disagree with it, and we're allowed to agree or disagree with what we want. But it's a little scary that that, that could completely overrun basically anybody else. But maybe I'm wrong. See, I took it from a different angle, like from the creator's side. I was like, good for them. Get your bag. Because for all of you who've made videos, know how more difficult it seems than just the eight or 10 minutes that the video is. And it can be very frustrating. It can be very difficult. And, and honestly, trying in today's day and age to get your stuff kind of bubbled up to the top is it takes like a, a tour de force with so much competition, as well as not just small everyday individual competition, but but companies like small like groups of people that are a legit small company that are running youtube channels so i i get why people are quick to say oh i they, they do the math and they say that number is how many years worth of income if i keep busting my butt and they just they sell out and maybe they still get a check and they they, they get some 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 say in what goes on in the channel but at the same time like it, it's just tough for for people to watch these videos and say well what's the What's the message? What's like the big the big hand behind it? Like you said, with you know, you got one huge company telling you, oh, now this is the best, this is the best widget. Everyone needs to buy this widget. Next thing you know, that widget's out of stock because it went on sale, or the widget, the price of the widget went up because you know the main channel said it was good. Yeah, I don't think any of us, and I don't want to take. I'm sure Mark has his own opinion here. I don't think any of us fault uh, Barbend or or anybody for selling. We know as content creators, it is incredible incredibly difficult. I mean, here we are at nine o'clock at night doing a, you know, doing a podcast. We've probably worked all day. My channel's down like 15 grand from the beginning of the year. Like I've spent a lot more than I've made. So I don't fault anybody for taking that ticket to a better life and taking care of their family. But I do still wonder a little bit what that means in the long run. Yeah. So I'm, I guess I'm, I'm more or less indifferent. I don't 
necessarily like follow bar bend too closely you know um it's more like the occasional like the occasional article you know that is kind of more related to spaces i'm already you know kind of following or um others like certain topics you know so more or less i kind of already have an idea of my opinion on on you know what, what, whatever i'm reading from them as it is it's it's just you know more to, more to get it like an additional perspective so there, there, there's the indifference on that side of things. And then just kind of going back to the whole garage gym reviews angles side of things as well, you know, I mean, even, even, even with, you know, when they were acquired by uh, pillar four, I, I think it's been kind of obvious, you know, the type of content that they've been cut, covering, you know, like the certain, certain products, you know, that, that, you know, we all can kind of see through, you know, um, um, you know, when there's an obvious like partnership there. And I mean, they, they, they do a pretty good job, you know, disclosing that also, but you know, for the ob- for for the uh, pieces of equipment that they do cover, that you know are a little bit more for the hardcore users. I haven't really noticed much change in you know the uh, I guess like Coop's opinions or like um, how he goes about you know reviewing you know those type of items, you know, and specifically you know some of those you know that that I've also picked up and um, like I, I find that more or less I, I I tend to agree with with my with uh, his opinion on those you know more often than not. And for those other items that, you know, I'm not even remotely interested in, I mean, I just don't really look at those whatsoever, you know? So that that's kind of why I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more indifferent to, to the bar bin side of things as well, because I think it's still going to be a little bit more dependent on, you know, whoever's, you know, writing the articles and just kind of uh, weeding, weeding, weeding through, you know, um, what might be, um, I guess, motivating that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely going to be a, an extra overarching shadow in, in the background, you know, that we're all going to kind of have to think about when with, with these type of acquisitions. What about you, Jake? Do you have an opinion? Do we get to ask you questions? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he wants to answer the yeah. tough ones. <laughs> <laughs> Tell this is the only one I answer. No, I I don't know. I think it's something to watch. If we see more crummy content being produced at a really fast level, then it's an issue. I, I think most of what everybody said, I would agree with. Taking your crummy content uh, <laughs> line out of context and posting that into shorts and reels and stuff. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think uh, good for Barbend, good for them. They obviously worked hard to get to where they are. I appreciate how they came out and yeah. said it. You know, they right. yeah, wrote an that's article. Better. It was very public. Yeah, yeah. I think the they CEO, did it the right yeah. way. Just an example: if Coop leaves Garage Gym Reviews, if he just stops being in the videos, is anyone watching? I think you know they tried to diversify. You, you guys saw that. I mean. They've been sold for years now, but they tried to diversify for a while, and I don't think they were getting quite the as big of a reach, which is I, why I think they started that, you know, second they have that channel. secondary channel now. Is it called like Garage Gym Reviews Everything? Yes. Well, to to yes. push that. But if I was Pillar 4 and he left, I'd be shitting myself <laughs> because he is the power behind that. He, you know, that channel. Yeah, there's no doubt he's the power behind it. But I, I think the YouTube, if I had to guess, I bet it makes up about 10% of the business. Um, yeah, like I, it's I kind of the face, but I, yeah, I think it's. It's primarily it, website driven. Yeah. Yeah. I think it drives it. I think it all funnels into the website. Yeah. And there's a lot of guys out there that have, they don't put their face on everything. I've talked to Bells of Steel and a lot of other companies and they'll mention people. And I'm like, that guy's actually making content. And they'll tell me like, yeah, his sales are really good. And I'll look up their blogs and it, they're just website driven, driven traffic. Yep. Cool. Crazy industry. Crazy industry. Well, that was quick. Good feedback. What about Thanks the Spartan for, uh, kettlebell? Let's just let's just get that. Let's just talk about it, okay? The Spartan okay, okay. kettlebell. <laughs> Titan Fitness is like Jekyll and Hyde. They leave, really like they drop a Moby Dick Power Bar, which has a great price, and I, I've been reviewing it, using it. It's a good bar. Like it's not great, obviously, but it, the price matches the quality. And then they they copy Joe Rogan uh, and on it with their kettlebells and the Spartan with their kettlebells and fringe sport with their kettlebells. And they just put some stupid, like half, half space guy, half gladiator kettlebell. They make it 50 pounds. And, th- and on top of it, they charge $3 a pound for it. Like, what's the point? It's not like they did a collaboration with like the Mandalorian and you get like Mandalorian heads. That would be kind of cool to have. I mean, why would you want this? It's not going to be balanced at all because it's all shapen. You know, I think maybe it was you that posted it, but somebody posted it where you can see their like, rendered artwork of it and the and it looks really badass and then you see the actual product and it's like elongated and like doesn't look like <laughs> there's no shading and you're like what what is that i didn't pay attention much to that i think i was filming when it came out but 
I, it's funny I that mean, you're all heated up about it. I didn't think it was. I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was in partnership with like Spartan. I know they've Spartan yeah. race. I thought they've done stuff. Yeah, t- with that. Titan has so sponsored thought- Spartan races in the past. I just they, they, I didn't see it made mention. Now maybe if I dug a little bit deeper, but. Why three dollars a pound? You're not like Rogue. I mean, I could go, you can get a Rogue made in America kettlebell for three dollars a pound. I mean, why yeah. would I get you, a skull though? <laughs> a random skull that, that that doesn't even mean anything, and it's going to get chipped in a couple days anyway. Listen, so. Is it sold out? And you're mad that you can't get one? <laughs> Am They're I going to see available. the skull in the now. background of your video soon? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't see the point. I mean, like they're, they're literally going to like target random people who think it's going to be cool to get a skull and they're going to, it's going to be a 50 pound paperweight. That's never going to get used. And at least if it was a Mandalorian skull or like an Avenger or some type of cool collaboration, you can see, but I mean, and again, like on it already did it. Spartan race already released their own. That looks exactly the same. Like the one that uh, they have. Well, I, I will say I used to have the on it ones next to regular kettlebells, never used the on it ones. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. got twenty something yeah. barbells. I don't. I don't use them all. So who yeah. am I to critique somebody else's purchases? Yeah, I guess that was it. Yeah, that's my rant. That's my rant's over. Endings, you're, uh, yeah, your, your endings are like my wife when she wants oh. to end a video. She just stops talking and says bye. Yeah, and that's how right. Mr. Mr. Beast does it that way too. So never let them know it's coming. Yeah, you guys are ruining my quick ending. 